every roofing system is gonna get hot throughout the day, especially in the summer when the sun is beating down on your roofing system. And every roof is gonna transfer heat to your house, whether that's a lot of heat or whether that's a little heat. So today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we are running some experiments to see different types of roofing assemblies, how much heat they hold and how much heat they release. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett, make sure you subscribe here. We release metal roofing and metal construction videos every Monday and Wednesday. Today we are talking about temperature and different roofing and deck assemblies. We have Jeff Hawk, Technical Director from Sheffield Metals. Jeff, what's up? Thanks for being here. Tell us what we got going on and what we're gonna be talking about today. Okay, so basically we built four different deck assemblies. Uh, so basically we made a plywood box with an inch and a half airspace. We have four different assemblies, like I said. The first one is metal panels over a synthetic underlayment and a plywood deck. The second one is your typical shingle installation. It's uh, shingles over 30 pound felt paper over a plywood deck. Then we have a metal roof over synthetic underlayment over shingles over 30 pound felt paper. So this would be a roof over application. Well, let's say, you know, you're getting a metal roof put on top of your shingle house. And then your fourth one is a metal roof over 3 8 inch fan fold insulation used as a separation barrier between that and the shingle roof that's underneath it and then the 30 pound felt paper and then the plywood deck is under that. Yeah, and these two are the same assemblies that we tested a few weeks ago on Adam's house talking about metal over shingles. Check that video out in the description below. So the goal here is to test the different kinds of assemblies and see how much heat they hold and how much they transfer to an airspace. So Jeff, how are we actually gonna accomplish that? So basically, we went out and we bought grilling thermometers basically a cord with a temperature, you know, thermometer on the end of it. We have it between the plywood and the first layer of underlayment in each assembly. The other space we have it is we drill the hole in the back of the assembly and we have it right in the center of that airspace. Tape the hole up with uh, duct tape to try to stop any air from moving into it and skewing the numbers. And we're gonna plug it into the, the meter and see what it reads out as. Now before we put the temperature probes into the deck assemblies, we put them all in the same glass of ice water to make sure they read the exact same temperature across the board, and they did. So we're going to be taking temperature readings at various intervals throughout the day over a few days. Jeff, tell me about that. We'll see how cool the roof is in the morning, how hot it gets at the hottest parts during the day, and then probably the most important, how fast it cools off after the sun goes down, and how much heat is being retained in the systems itself. Yeah, and we have really no idea what's going to happen with None. this experiment. I mean, we have four very different assemblies here. Really excited and interested to see what numbers we come up with. Yeah, and it's also going to help determine, you know, talking about how much heat is retained in your system, and in, that's going to obviously going to transfer into your house and your living space. You know, obviously, you know, you expect your air conditioner probably to be running harder during the middle of the day, but, you know, how much harder does it have to run after this is cooled off? to keep the house cooler because that heat is transferring into the living space. Right. So the color we're using for the samples is dark bronze. It's on the lower spectrum of the SRI values of the colors that we have to offer. The uh, SRI value is a 24. The whites that we have to offer, I mean, they can go into the 80s, 81, 82. Super reflective, super cool roofing. But, you know, wanted to have a kind of a apples to apples comparison. The, the bronzes are a popular color, so you know, that's one of the reasons we went with it. You know, see uh, see how the, the lower SRI value performs compared to the shingle systems. Uh, any color you pick better with a better SRI value should obviously perform better than what we're testing. Yeah, and if you want to see us uh, test any different colors or different assemblies, comment down below and we'll check those out. For the shingles, we're using a GAF Royal Sovereign Nickel Gray, I believe is the color. Just a run of the mill, three tap shingle. So we're gonna take temperature readings over the course of two or three hot days. If it's cloudy, overcast, or if it's raining really hard, we'll try to negate that day, but we'll leave these out for a few days and see what kind of temperatures we get. All the decks are facing a southern exposure to get the most direct sunlight over the course of the day as possible. So without further ado, let's check some temperature readings. All right, we have about a week's worth of data that we collected. 
There is a couple times where it was raining, so we have omitted those results. The easiest way that we can view all the data is by averages. So we have taken the midday temperatures and the evening temperatures and averaged them out of each of the four decks. Now remember, each of the four decks had two temperature probes, one in between the roofing substrate and the plywood, and one in the air chamber. And a quick note about the air chamber, there was no intentional ventilation. So uh, the probe was in the air chamber, but there was no air actually moving within that uh, just to get that out there. So I have Adam and Jeff on the call with me and we're gonna take a look at some of these average temperatures. And let's start with the midday temperatures. The red lines are the metal over shingles. The blue lines is the metal over insulation over shingles and the gray is the shingle roof, and the black is the metal roof. I can tell you right away that the shingles have the hottest temperature that we've seen uh, during the middle of the day at 131 degrees, and that is from the deck probe, um, and the metal over insulation over shingles has the lowest temperature on both the chamber and the deck, um, at 89 and 104 degrees, respectively. So guys, what do you kind of see when you're looking at these midday temperatures um, from the deck and chamber probes? Well, I mean, it's not a real big shock to see, uh, you know, metal getting as hot as it does. Um, the same with the shingles. Uh, you know, it heats up. Um, the shingles are thicker. They retain the heat. What I think that was surprising to me was uh, how much difference that thermal break in the assembly makes in the in the overall temperature of it, whether it be metal over shingles or metal over ISO with shingles. They both performed better than uh, I thought they were going to. Yeah, tell me what a thermal break is. So a thermal break is basically going to be anything that's going to create a separation barrier that's going to break up that thermal transfer, basically, when it comes to the uh, the assembly. So in the, you know, the metal over shingles, the shingles acting as a thermal break and with the metal over ISO over shingles, you have the ISO and the uh, shingles as a thermal break. Um, and that's, you know, that's what I'm kind of contributing to the uh, metal over shingles with ISO performance so well, as far as uh, the deck temperature. The way we kind of look at that and the way you want to translate that is how hard does your HVAC system have to work from there? So we're, we're really specifically focusing on hotter days, and so if you're looking at it, you know, with your, your roof deck being 104 with the best assembly and the chamber temperature being 89, that's, you know, how much less heat is being absorbed into a structure. Or that's, that's the concept we're trying to prove. So, you know, if you're trying to be at a comfortable 73, 75 degrees on a hot summer day in your house, that's, you know, your, your system is going to have to work a little less harder than, you know, the other types of systems just based off of construction alone. Um, and you think about that, you know, that's one day and you kind of expand that over a month, a year, the lifetime, your system, where you might say, Hey, you know, I'm going to pay, you know, a, a little bit less for this type of construction, but, when you look at, you know, the overall lifetime of the assembly, you might actually be saving money just due to the energy uh, cost averted uh, long term. So now I can see someone watching this video looking at this midday data and they say, you know, I'm in a hot area. Why wouldn't I put insulation under my metal roof? You know, that seems to be what the data is telling us here gives the coolest roofing system. You know, if, if I'm a homeowner and I'm, I'm looking at this, you know, what do you guys have to say about that? Well, any insulation yeah. is going to provide R value, you know, no matter how thick or thin. Um, it depends on what kind of R value you're going for and what kind of energy savings you're looking, you know, you're trying to achieve. Um, but this was, this was three eighths inch fan fold insulation. I don't know if it gets any thinner than that. And you can, you know, uh, might have to do one, do a test with uh, the fan fold over directly over metal and a wood deck and see how much the shingles had to play into the uh, the performance of it versus how much the insulation did on its own. Again, I, I don't want to sit here and say what we did was perfect, Dad. Uh, you know, this is Cleveland, Ohio. We tried to capture it in a hotter time of the year, hotter part of the year. 
Um, so certainly, you know, a, a longer term experiment down the road might, you know, prove, you know, our data to be certainly better, but, um, you know, trying to prove it out over a couple of weeks and in, in the data that we captured, um, to Jeff's point, I think you'd assume that anything adding our value, especially in a hot area or even a, a, a area that has, you know, a climate that varies throughout the year, you know, looks like it's going to keep it cooler in the summer and it'll probably keep it warmer in the winter. So um, again, that's that winter comment is just an assumption, but it's adding our value. So you'd assume that uh, the heat that you're trying to keep inside your home then is going to have a harder time getting out of the home. Is that something you guys see with metal roofing ins installations? Do do people put insulation, you know, in between their decking and their, their metal? You see it a lot in more commercial buildings. Um, usually, Usually when it comes to a resident a residential application, your insulation is inside your attic space. It's not on top of your roof deck. We put the metal roof on my house, Thad. You know, I'll probably take a look at putting some insulation, you know, up in the attic, the areas that I have an attic, um, down the line just to, just to see if it's something that can really help me with energy savings. But I've got good ventilation in the attic, so... Um, that's another concern I have is older house, the more insulation you put in there, um, you might kind of inhibit some of that, uh, natural ventilation that you kind of need. And, uh, you know, Todd Miller kind of referred to it though, that you could be creating, creating a microclimate with an existing house. If you pack it full of insulation, how is that, uh, the, the, basically the, the vapor inside your house able to escape, you know, to, avoid any condensation or mold issues, things like that. So I think there's a little bit deeper of a story when it comes to that stuff. Yeah, that's a good point because I can definitely see, you know, you could just take this at face value and say, oh, I need insulation under my metal right now, you know, but that might be creating a problem that you wouldn't have otherwise had. You know, it just doesn't, you just don't know unless you're looking at the project yourself. Um, you have an expert take a look and decide what ventilation needs uh, you have for your building, what condensation issues could be present, you know, if you decide to take one uh, method versus another method. Um, there's a lot of different factors that, you know, you should think about before taking something like this at face value. Yeah, something you're going to want to work with your design professional on, you know, your roofer, your design professional, your engineer, kind of you name it. So, you know, and I would assume too, you know, that the, the chamber readings are probably what's going to, the temperatures there are going to be what's causing your HVAC system to work harder or, or less hard. Um, again, with these decks that we built with no ventilation whatsoever, um, I mean, there's really no way to get that hot air out of there. So I don't know if adding a venting situation into it would, you know, dramatically change those numbers. Now we have two times of day here, midday temperatures and evening temperatures. And this is really important because it's not just how hot your roof gets or how hot the airspace or your attic gets, um, but it's how quickly or how slowly your roofing system ends up dissipating that heat over time. So these evening temperatures kind of give us a window into what each system does when it comes to actually dissipating that heat. And we can see here the metal uh, has the uh, lowest temperatures in the evening. And from this data looks to dissipate that heat uh, more rapidly than the other three assemblies. The ones that involve shingles with some type of metal overlay on it, um, you know, with your regular shingle roof, when it does start to cool off outside and it's in, you know, you take away the heat source, uh, you know, it has air running over the tops of those shingles to help, like you said, dissipate that heat. But the, uh, the ones that have the metal covering with the shingles as part of the assembly, um, you know, there's no air movement or anything like that. So it's just going to radiate that heat longer um, throughout the evening until, you know, it's able to cool off just temperature wise. I think the thing to, to take away from here is, yes, this is a small sample, but that is pretty interesting because you'd think that essentially the insulated uh, assembly would, would perform a little bit better, even with that higher R value, but kind of to Jeff's point, uh, it is kind of causing that emissivity to, to be a little bit, uh, on the lower end, just because it is not letting that those shingles cool off as readily. Um, 
Yeah, you know, like, like I've said before, I'd like to see us kind of extend this out, uh, get a bigger sample size into the summer, uh, you know, I guess more days and, and potentially even see more different assembly types constructed and, and see what, you know, kind of our viewers have to say, you know, about testing other, other varieties. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to look here at these chamber temperatures. You'd see the metal over shingles midday chamber temperature was 90 degrees and the metal deck got up to 96 degrees. But in the evening, the metal over shingles deck only went down about 10 degrees, whereas the metal deck went down a full 20 degrees. So even though it didn't get as hot during the day, like Jeff said, it, it dissipated heat way less than just the metal roof did. Yeah. Well, and that's that's another thing too with metal in general. Um, you know, when we take the temperature re readings, it's you know whatever degrees it is right then. You get cloud cover or a storm comes through midday. That metal that the metal cools off rather quickly. So, you know, it, it depends. You you know that that roof's going to fluctuate in temperatures throughout the day as far as heating and cooling, as far as the surface temperature goes and uh, what what it transfers to the deck. Now we really want this data and this video to become an, a conversation starter with you guys. Obviously, this experiment's not perfect, but we believe we have some good, ac accurate data here over some common residential builds that we see our customers um, doing often. Comment down below if you have any suggestions for other types of assemblies that we can test, ways that we can make this experiment better. You let us know um, and we'd love to talk to you about it. Like I said, we want this to be a conversation and we want this information to be helpful to everyone. Now, obviously, you don't want to make any decisions based off this in this information alone. You want to talk to a professional, an engineer, a contractor, an architect, as Adam said, architectural professional um, for your specific project. So subscribe here to the Metal Roofing channel so you don't miss more videos like this. As always, I'm Thad Barnett and we will catch you next time.